All right, we've made it to the last task in the assess step of the RMF. This is the plan of action and milestones, and this used to be part of the next step in the older version of the RMF. It makes sense to bring it back to the assess step because this is where we're talking about all the deficiencies that are discovered during the assessment, how we remediate them, and this is a longer term remediation of the findings that were discovered during the assessment. So the task is prepare the plan of actions and milestones, or POAM, based on the findings and recommendations of the assessment reports. Potential inputs for this task include the updated security and privacy assessment reports, the updated security and privacy plans, the organization and system level risk assessment results, the organizational risk management strategy and risk tolerance, Expected outputs from this task are the plan of action and milestones detailing the findings from the security and privacy assessment reports that are to be remediated. Primary responsibility for this task is the system owner and the common control provider. They're supported by the information owner or information steward, the system security officer, the system privacy officer, the senior agency information security officer, the senior agency official for privacy, the control assessor, and the chief acquisition officer. This task does align with the SDLC. For a new system, it aligns with implementation and assessment. For an existing system, it aligns with operations and maintenance. This does align with the cybersecurity framework. It aligns with ID.RA6 risk assessment. Risk responses are identified and prioritized. So into this task, the plan of action and milestones is included as part of the authorization package. The plan of action and milestone describe the actions that are planned to correct deficiencies in the controls identified during the assessment of the controls and during continuous monitoring. So this is a document we continue. It's again one of those, one of those documents that's a living document. We'll continue to add to it and update it. So not only the assessments that were determined during the assessment, but also assessments that happen later during the continuous monitoring phase are added to the plan of action and milestones. And this is just a plan for how the system owner or common control provider is going to address and fix the deficiencies that were uncovered during those assessments. The plan of action and milestones includes the tasks to be accomplished with a recommendation for completion before or after system authorization, resources required to accomplish the task, milestones established to meet the task, and the scheduled completion date for the milestones and tasks. So this is gonna define how these deficiencies are corrected, when they're corrected, and by who they're corrected. And if you look at this, it's important to note that these can be taking place either before or after the system authorization. So in a way, if they're done after the authorization, we're telling the authorizing official that if you authorize the system, this is when we will fix all of the findings that were discovered during the assessment. It's an agreement between the system owner or common control provider and the authorizing official on when the controls will be fixed. The plan of action and milestones is reviewed by the authorizing official to ensure there is agreement with the remediation actions planned to correct the identified deficiencies. It is subsequently used to monitor the progress in completing the actions. So when the system owner or the common control provider says, I will hit this milestone in a month, the authorizing official should be reviewing that and ensuring that that milestone was met. And if it wasn't met, there could be actions to include removal of the authorization to operate. Deficiency are accepted by the authorizing official as residual risk and are remediated during the assessment or prior to submission of the authorization package to the authorizing official. The plan of action and milestone entries are not necessary when the deficiencies are accepted by the authorizing official as residual risk. However, deficiencies identified during assessment and monitoring are documented in the assessment reports, which can be retained within an automated security and privacy management and reporting tool 
to maintain an effective audit trail. So in essence, if the authorizing official is accepting a risk and calling it a residual risk they're going to accept, we don't put that on the plan of action a milestone because there is no plan for correcting that control. The authorizing official is accepting it as it's implemented. So that's important to note. It lives in the assessment report and that becomes the document where those findings will live, but it never goes into the plan of action milestones because there is no plan on correcting that deficiency. Organizations develop plans of action milestones based on assessment results obtained from the control assessments, audits, and the continuous monitoring in accordance with applicable laws, executive orders, directives, policies, regulations, standards, or guidance. Organizations implement a consistent process for developing plans of action and milestones that use a prioritized approach to risk mitigation that is uniform across the organization. The risk assessment guides the prioritization process for items included in the plan of action and milestones. So we prioritize the findings in the POAM. We put those things that are more risky and more impactful to the organization and the system on the top of the list, and those should be the things we address first with our limited resources. The process ensures that the plan of action and milestones are informed by the security categorization of the system and the security, privacy, and supply chain risk assessments, the specific deficiencies and controls as they're reported in the security control assessment and privacy assessment reports, the criticality of the identified control deficiencies, that is, the direct or indirect effect that the deficiencies have on the security and privacy posture of the system and therefore on the risk exposure of the organization or the ability of the organization to perform its mission or business functions, proposed risk mitigation approach to address the identified deficiencies in the controls or prioritization of the risk mitigation actions and allocation of risk mitigation resources. And finally, risk mitigation resources, for example, personnel, new hardware, or software and tools. So we make sure that the POEM is informed by all of these things so we can correctly identify those things that are the most impactful to the organization's mission or to the protection of the data that the system is processing. And those things make it to the top of the list and are addressed first. References for this task include Special Publications 830, 53 Alpha, and 160 Volume 1, as well as IR 8062. In closing, in this module, we discussed the last task in the assessment step, A6. It's inputs and outputs, roles and responsibilities, SDLC and CSF lifecycle alignment, the POAM, the POAM contents, a POAM review, deficiencies, POAM and assessment results, the POAM detail, and finally references that support this task. If any of this doesn't look familiar to you, go back and watch the video again. If it does make sense to you, on to the next video, or if you're taking the course, onto the course material that's going to further reinforce this topic.